Morning New Beginning Church and our online worshipers. We welcome you to the Youth Sunday at NBC. We are so glad you have chosen to worship with us today. As we reflect on the goodness of God, let us thank the Lord because He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I will read to you Psalms 86 from the New Living Translation Bible. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I am troubled, and you will answer me. No page in God is like you, O oh Lord. None can do what you do. Verse 11. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. Voy a leer uh, Salmos 86, versículos 1 hasta el 8 y versículo 11. Atiéndeme, Señor, respóndeme. Pues pobre estoy y estoy necesitado. Resérvame la vida, pues te estoy fiel. Tú eres mi Dios y en ti confío. Salva a tu siervo. Compadécete, Señor, de mí, porque a ti clamo todo el día. Reconforta el espíritu de sus siervos, porque a ti, Señor, elevo mi alma. Tú, Señor, eres bueno y perdonador. Grande es tu amor por todos los que, los que te invocan. Presta oído, Señor, a mi oración. Atiende a la voz de mi clamor. En el día de mi angustia te invoco, porque tú me respondes. No hay, Señor, entre los dioses otros como tú, ni hay obras semejantes a las tuyas. Versículo 11. Instruyeme, Señor, en tu camino para conducirme con fidelidad. Dame integridad de corazón para temer tu nombre. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be here today. Um, thank you for sending your only son to die on the cross for our sins. Let there be more peace, love in this world, and let there not be no more war, sickness, sadness, and cruelty. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Gracias, Señor, por este día que nos has nos has dado hoy uh, gracias por levantarnos otro día más gracias por mandar a tu único hijo para que pagara por nuestros pecados uh, que haya más amor y paz en este mundo que ya no haya más maldad crueldad, tristeza, muerte y guerra uh, y gracias por todo lo que has hecho por nosotros en el nombre de Jesús, Amén
Lord. You may be seated. that buckets could be used as instruments? Listen as we prove our point in playing strange asparagus on the buckets with drumsticks. knock on wood.
the xylophone ensemble up with the selection called Knock on Wood. We will improvise on a simple melody and add other percussion instruments in which we will shake, hit, or scrape. And our parents will join us. Yes. <laughs>
so much fun. They probably will never admit it, but they had a lot of fun doing that. The Bible says the devil is a liar. The devil says that he can give you everything you desire and everything you want. But I want you to know you'll be playing with the fire, so don't believe the lie the devil tells you. It comes at a price and you'll be walking on the water. We will say the devil is a liar. Amen. in the role. Daniel's playing the piano. I'm going to play the drums. Don't believe. 
he is a devil because he's going to have you walking on the wire. He's going to lead you in the fire. All right, the devil is a liar. Since the devil is a liar, Jesus is the truth and way to go. I may not have the best of anything or be the best of everything, but I know someone who has everything and he's my everything. That's why I'm happy just to know that I'm God's child. He's the one I choose to believe and I choose to follow. We will sing, I'm his child, his name is Jesus.
wonderful in their singing. These young people have really received gifts from God. So young people, thank you for blessing us one more again. Thank you so much for being a part of our service and blessing the Lord, blessing us and allowing the Lord to use you. God has tremendously blessed us one more again with these young people. Amen. And we are grateful to the God that we serve, that he has done it again. Amen. God just keep on doing things over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. Let me call your attention to the book of St. John in the New Testament. The book is St. John, the chapters 8, two verses if you would. St. John chapter 8, verses 44 and 58. Verses 44 and 58. St. John Chapter 8, verses 44 and 58. Hallelujah. God has given us favor one more again. St. John, chapter 8, verse number 44. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, You are of your father, the devil. In the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Verse 58, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. I want to continue in this series called Loving God and talk about loving God in your youth. Thank you. Loving God in your youth. We all have to understand that youth and young people learn from what they see. Amen. Sometimes when we say something, they get it. Other times when we do something, they get it. Therefore, we have to put a pattern of life before them that they will continue to get it. Youth and young people are like sponges. They suck up, they soak up, and they drain the vessel on which the, the sponge sits. And they hold it, and they remember it. Those of us in the room, many of us, we've forgotten what we said two days ago. And I dare push it to say that many of us have forgotten what happened between Sunday school and church service. But you think young people, they keep it. They hold it. And if you don't think they're listening, they have it before you get home and they will tell you before you get home just what was said and just what was done. Matter of fact, you think young people today are far more advanced than we were. 
My activity was rolling ties and climbing sunnyberry trees. Their activity is AI, watching the whole world move all at the same time. I used to wonder, why does the Bible say that every eye will see Jesus when he returns? Well, the fact of the matter is, even today as I stand, people all over the world is able to view our service in real time. So we're not far from seeing Jesus all at the same time. When he cracks the sky, the Bible says we will see him, even those who pierced him in his side. If we really going to love God the way we say we love God, we don't have problems with what God asks us to do. I said to you in the first part of this series that we must love God through truth. Meaning the word of God. The word of God is God's truth. There are no arrows in it. It is infallible. It never changes. The same word that was written more than 2,000 years ago is able to impact our lives today. I also said to you that we must love God through our stewardship. I don't know how many of you are lost, but your money belongs to God. Your talent belongs to God. What you carry, the way you carry yourself belongs to God. So in our stewardship, whatever God has blessed us with, we don't own it, it belongs to God. Therefore, we don't have problem with bringing God 10% plus some because it all belongs to him. We are not the owners, he is the owner. We are stewards, we are supervisors, we are managers over what God has given us and therefore, we don't complain. We don't struggle with whether to give God uh, a net or a gross tithe because we discovered that if you want a net blessing, bring God a net tithe. But if you want a gross blessing, bring God a gross tithe. We said that if you really, really love God, you won't have a problem with your talents being brought to him. You don't get tired of serving him. You, you get tired in your physical body, yes. You get tired emotionally, yes. It, but when it comes to God, you know you can't sit down on him. You don't struggle with being what God has called you to do. Because we understand that the God we serve makes all things happen. So today I'm talking about loving God even in your youth. We have to teach our youth how to love God. We have to teach them from the beginning how to respect seniors. We have to teach them from the beginning that they are only who they are because of who God is. We have to make sure they understand that, that there's no explosion that has taken place that made us who we are. They have to understand that there's an all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-powerful God who sits high in heaven, who's, who has a footstool on earth that make all these things happen. We have to teach our young folk, even at an early age, that, that you have to love God because God loves you. He loves you enough that he has given his only begotten son just for you. The word begotten in the Greek means you're his only unique son. Yeah. His only one of a kind son. God has given him just for you. And none of us in this room would give our precious babies for anybody in this room. You'll be talking about how you can like them anyhow. And then the famous line now is, I don't like them like that. I don't love them like that. Matter of fact, I don't want to be around them like that. But while we were yet sinners, God gave his only begotten son just for us. And who would love a father like that? In John chapter 8, in the text, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. 
First of all, when you look at the first pericope, you will find out that they brought a woman who was caught in the middle of adultery. Now, when you do your observation, you notice that they brought a woman. Now, it's strange to think, Sister Henry, that a woman can have adultery all by herself. I knew I would get an amen over there. Here they are, these self-righteous. These self-righteous men who brought this woman, threw her down at the foot of Jesus, and say, Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act. And Moses' law says we ought to stone her to death. They didn't bring a man. They didn't bring a boy. They brought a woman. The Bible said Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. And when he wrote on the ground, he raised his head. And he said, he without sin cast the first stone. The Bible said they left. They had rocks in their jaws. They left. Their little religion was shot. Their religion was thrown out. They left. And the Bible says they left from the oldest one to the youngest one. It tells us today just because you're old and been in church a long time doesn't mean that you're so righteous that you can call somebody else's sin out simply because their sin is just different from your sin. It's not that you are so holy. It's not so because you are so walking with God. It's only because their sin is different from your sin. All right. That's right. Then the next one, Richard P. John moves in chapter 8, and he talks about Jesus being the light of the world. He talks about the fact that Jesus, God the Father, are the real judges. And we can't judge anybody else. And young folk got it down now. When they don't want to hear what you have to say, don't judge me. But let me just serve you notice, you don't have to judge a fruit. You just look at the tree. And every tree that bears fruit, guess what? It gives off the fruit that is represented by the tree. Apples, trees, grow apples on it. Peach trees have peaches on it. Grape vines have grapes on it. You don't have to judge anybody to understand and to realize that they are who they are. My young Angelo says it like this. She says, somebody shows you who they are, believe them. The only way mankind can change is that it's through Jesus, the Christ. When we, when, we fall in, when we fall into this last pericope, Jesus is talking to these self-righteous religious folk. And they are bragging on who Abraham is. They're saying, now, you ought to be stoned. When you look at verse number 59, and I'm going to bag into it, when you look at verse 59 of John chapter 8, Jesus is standing there. He's done a great thing, but they want to stone him for blasphemy. They want to kill him off. Let me tell you, there are people in this world that if you don't believe like they believe, if you don't disassociate yourself with people they disassociate themselves with, they want to kill you off. Have you ever had a friend that thought that since you don't mess with them anymore, they, they, since they don't mess with them anymore, you ought not mess with them anymore? And then those same friends who you choose not to mess with anymore, then they think you still ought to mess with them. There are people who believe that they ought to set the standard for you. But let me tell you, let Jesus set your standard and Jesus alone. Young people, don't give in to peer pressure. And don't give in to pure pressure. Don't give in to the pressures of life. And I realize that you have pressures around you that we have never thought of. I realize that we are old fogey. I realize that we don't have it going on like you have it going on. I realize that we don't know what we're talking about. But we didn't get old, gray, and bald by being fools. Make sure you pay attention to what's being taught to you. 
Because when you get out there on your own, you're going to need what's being taught at the house. And it gives us a guarantee that if you teach, if you teach the right way, if you teach the right way at home, then when they get old, they won't depart from it. There are many young people wondering what's going on in their lives now. It's because they were taught the right way. And every time they go to do the wrong thing, they have this memory in mind of what they were taught at the house. Every time they, they think they need to drink a little bit or sip a little bit or dance like this or move like this, they remember what was taught at the house. Therefore, we have to understand that we have to love God enough where we can show love to our children enough. Let me share with you, just because you let them do everything they want to do, when they throw temper tangers, that's not love. The Bible declares that love is when you chastise one. Amen. Love is when you say, no, don't do that. Love is when you give them direction, even when they don't want to have direction. And let me warn you, my dear, you got to build a tree when it's limber. You have to build a tree when it's young. Because when it gets old, that tree will not bend, it will break. So you have to teach young people while they're young. I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful for young people who are manable at this church. One young people who know God at this church. Young people who consistently come, and I know young people, this is just between you and me. I know Sister Davis ain't the easiest person in the world to deal with. <laughs> young folks scared to say amen. I understand, I understand, I understand real well when she get in performance mode. I understand when she's focusing and lays her sight in. I understand that she will snap at you. Yeah, yeah. I understand she'll tell you, don't ask me that right now. You should have asked me that a month ago. I understand. I understand. And Brother Whitlock, do you want to know why I understand Brother Whitlock? Because at the house, when she zeroed in, and I come through the house and I open the door. I'm, I'm spending time with the Lord. I understand, young folk. But discipline teaches you discipline in your own ways. Structure teaches you structure. When you have structure, you will have structure the rest of your life. And when somebody says something to you that's just two months older than you are, consider it because they may be trying to teach you the right thing. Look at the text. These Pharisees were old trifling folk. These were old religious folk. And they act like they had never done any wrong. But on one hand, they want to talk about how righteous they are and how they are children of Abraham, but then they want to condemn everybody to hell. Have you ever seen somebody that gets saved and, and two minutes after they're saved, they send everybody to hell? <laughs> I'm the only one. And there are some churches that have come to the conclusion that if you're not a part of this church, you're going to hell. Now we have a God that's an unlimited God. And what makes them think that this denomination or this church location is the only righteous church that's on planet earth. Don't you know there's a whole world and the Bible will teach us and the children's songs will tell us he has the whole world in this hand and here there are 5,000, 10,000, 500,000 people that's going to say that if you're not a part of this body, then you're not going to heaven. My, 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 how limited. The devil, the devil is a liar. The children told me, and they, they just gave me a little cheat card because I was trying to figure out how I was going to go through all of this. But I'm going to read Gibbous' cheat card. <laughs> the songwriter says the words, the devil is a liar. The Bible says the devil is a liar. The devil says he can give you everything you desire. The devil says that he can give you everything you want. But I want you to know, you are playing with fire. 
I hope the young folk has it in their spirit that the devil will always tease you. The devil will always tell you you can have anything you desire. The devil will always present to you everything you want. But let me just tell you, everything that comes quickly leaves quickly. We have to teach our young people to have honest work ethics. Take on jobs that are honest paying jobs. You know, you know, I know they ride in whatever they want to ride in. They play with whatever they want to play with. They live wherever they want to live. But the psalmist says in Psalm 73 that my feet had almost slipped. My steps had well now got from under me. And I looked at the people who were rich. I looked at the sinful. I wanted to be just like them because when I saw them, they were not only bawling, but they were shot calling. I know that ages me. But let me just share with you today, just because they have everything they want, the devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. And I don't hear grandparents saying that anymore. Mamas, daddies, grandparents used to say, the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. The Bible says the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Look at, look at verse number 44. Verse number 44 says, not only that he's talking, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He not only says, you are liars. He not only says, you are the devil. He says, not only that, but your daddy, your father is the devil, and he's the author of lies. The devil wants to pull out young people because they are sharp, because they are brilliant. Because they, they have life ahead of them. If the devil can't get you, mom and daddy, he's going to shoot at your children. If the devil cannot arrest you, grandmama and granddaddy, he's going to grab at your grandchildren. The devil is out to kill, to steal, and destroy. And because the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy, we have to make sure we put Jesus in him. The children, the children who respect their parents when they get old are the children who know the Lord. You think because you're their friend today that you're going to be respected the rest of your life. The children who respect parents when they get old are the children who have discipline, have been disciplined, who have structure now. They need structure. They, they need somebody to tell them, no, you, you're not going to do that. Hey, 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 I want to do this. You have to, daddy, you say like this. Now, we hadn't done anything. <laughs> I mean, we hadn't even gotten it in the store yet. Before we get out the car, mama said, if it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. Now, she knew everything in that store was not ours. But she tells us, if it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. And then daddy would chime in, because we only went to town once a month, you know. He would chime in and daddy would say, if you call yourself throwing a temper tantrum and fall on the floor, I'm going to get right down there with you. And let me tell you, you didn't want daddy to get down there with you. Parents today get so embarrassed the way children act, we didn't have an opportunity to embarrass our parents. I mean, they, you, you, in our, in the David's household, you didn't throw temper tantrum. Matter of fact, you didn't say, mm. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't, those things didn't happen because there was respect from the, from the cradle to the grave. Mom is 80 now. And there's still respect. Simply because she said, don't go. I have to give her a reason, Mama, why I, I, it's imperative for me to go. Now, here I am. I am 60 plus years old. And the time later that hit Silver City, I was getting ready to drive right into it. But Mama said, now, when you get through with the funeral and the family gathering, come on home. But I had a notion, Brother Miles. I had a notion. I, I, I thought about it. Driving down to Yazoo City. I would make a stop in Belzona, then drive through Silver City to get to Yazoo City. But Mama said, come home. 59 years old, Mama said, come home. And guess what? It started pouring down rain. I said, I better go home. I did not realize I was 30 miles from a tornado that had just hit the ground. 
I didn't realize that the 45 miles that I had to drive through Yazoo City, there was a tornado tearing up Silver City. I was leaving Moorhead, Mississippi. I was getting ready to get on Highway 3, and I took a right on Highway 3 rather than a left on Highway 3, went back to Indianola, told Mama I was there, got to bed and went to sleep, and when I woke up that morning, the path that I was taking was the same path that the tornado took. It's only because respect will carry you a long way. And that little matchbox rental car that I was in, you know, when, when I rent a car, I rent a car for me. <laughs> but William, it, it ain't about how long it is. <laughs> it's not about people asking me, is that your car? Man, that's a bad car. I had a matchbox. And every time I order an economy sized car, they always upgrade me. So I had my matchbox. And that tornado ripped through those houses and it tore it asunder. But because mama said, come home, I went home. And safe was I. The devil is a liar. He tells you you can have anything you desire. But the devil wants you to believe that he can tell you the truth. And what the devil does, he twists the truth. He gives you enough of it. And then he makes you walk a liar. Yeah. The devil is a liar. Yeah. We look at the text and we find in the text the devil is the enemy of life and truth. The devil lies and that lie was the same lie that got us in this predicament. Adam and Eve were in the garden. They didn't have a lot of stuff we had, but they didn't, have, they didn't need it because they were walking with God on a regular basis. And as they walked and talked with God, God says, there's a tree that sits in the midst of the garden. I'm not going to move my tree. I'm not going to put a fence around my tree. There's a tree that sits in the midst of the garden. Do not eat of this tree, for the day that you eat this tree, you will surely die. And Adam and Eve ate of the tree. The devil was present in the garden. He rolled himself up in snake. And the snake says, you won't surely die. You will become a god. The devil takes the truth and he twists it. Young folks, stop saying, senior citizens, stop saying that I just told a little white lie. It's a lie. If it's not the truth, it might as well be a big black lie. So, so because it's a lie, it is of the devil. And ever since that day, mankind has been dying spiritually and physically. The devil want to twist the truth. The text declares that he's a murderer. He's been killing off folk for years, for years, for ages. He's been killing off people. He leads people away from God and away from the life and the truth of God. The devil is a liar. I mean, this song has been in my spirit for the last two weeks. I mean, I've been trying to sing it yet. Yeah, man, I've been trying to sing this thing. I've been, I've been trying to sing it, and then as I tried to sing it, I really wasn't worried about my tune. I, I got the worry. The words say it comes at a price. You will be walking a wire. The devil is a liar. On the other hand, Jesus lives. In truth. John chapter 14 verse number 6 says that I am the way. Jesus is speaking. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And he that comes unto me, I will give him everlasting life. Finally in verse number 58, the devil is trying to keep us away from the truth. Verse number 58, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. It says two things here. It says, number one, that, G that Jesus existed in eternity. In eternity past, eternity present, and he will exist in eternity future. He says, not I was, he says, I am. 
The second thing is, is true is that because he says I am, he demonstrates to us in this passage that he is just as much God as God and just as much man as man. Therefore, we have the, the hypostatic union. He's just as much God as God, just as much man as man. He is God man. He's not the man of God. He is God man. So finally, so he wants to keep us away from those two truths. That Jesus is God. And that Jesus exists from the beginning. And the other four truths are found in what is known as the four spiritual laws. These four spiritual laws are truths that the devil is trying to keep us away from. In this four spiritual laws book, the first law is God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. If no one else loved you, God loves you. And he has a wonderful plan for your life. God has planned your life. According to John 3 and 16, God loved the world so much until he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The second law is that man is sinful. The devil don't want you to know it. The devil doesn't want you to know that man is sinful and man is separated from God. Man is separated from God. God can't get to man and man can't get to God because sin is a great gulf that causes us to fall short of God and causes God not to get to us. Man is sinful, separated from God. Therefore, we cannot experience God and God's love in our lives. The devil doesn't want you to know. Law number three is that Jesus is God's only provision for man to get to God. Jesus is God's only provision. It doesn't matter if your parents, your grandparents were connected to the church. Doesn't matter if your granddaddy was the chairman of deacons in the church. It is a thing that you need to understand. And that is Jesus is the only provision to God. He's the only way. Jesus died on Calvary. He bridged the gap for you and me. He made a way. He became the provision for us to get to God and to get rid of our sins. Through him, through Jesus, you know and experience God's love and God's plan for your life. It's only through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the fourth thing in the four spiritual laws that the devil doesn't want you to know is that we must individually receive him as our personal Savior. We have to receive him for ourselves. You cannot get it through somebody else. It will not come, your salvation will not come through osmosis. A woman told me one day, Tornado came and she took her back and she laid that Bible right there on her chest. I said, well, why did you lay the Bible on your chest? She said, well, I just wanted to be close to my Bible during the storm. I said, you don't need to lay the Bible on your chest. It doesn't come through osmosis. You need to have the Bible in your heart. You need to make sure you read the Bible before the tornado shows up. And we in Houston need to make sure we read the Bible before the hurricane shows up. And let me tell you another secret. We need to read the Bible before the heat shows up. <laughs> but Wednesday night, Wednesday night I told them that, that I mowed the yard and I was wiped out. We were dealing with Mark chapter 5 where the woman reached in and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus said, I felt virtue leave me. I paralleled that to the virtue that left me when I was born that y'all. But the virtue that left me doesn't compare to the virtue that left Jesus. Jesus gave forth healing virtue. And I made the statement, I said, out there in 110 degrees weather, more than y'all. Somebody said, well, it wasn't but 98 degrees that day. Where did you get 110? Because the heat index was 110. It doesn't matter what the what the mercury says. What really matters is what it feels like. Water and Gatorade just wasn't enough. God's beaming sun just wiped me out. I sat down for a while, had to get up and go back to the backyard. Some young folk won't even know what that experience is about. Because you do know if your boy is over 10 years old, you shouldn't be paying, paying a yard man to cut your yard. I was wiped out. I mean, I was told, I sat down and I was there for the count. I mean, flat out. I mean, drained. And the fact of the matter is, if hell is hotter than this, 
It's hell. It's higher than this. You don't want to go to hell. God said, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? Baby, you need Jesus to endure this heat. You need Jesus to go to Walmart. You need Jesus to, to pump gas. You need Jesus sitting at the red light when you're thinking about blowing in front, from somebody in front of you. You need Jesus. So the, the fourth law says you must individually receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need to receive him right here today. Because none of us know when our last day is. None of us can tell when we're going to get out of here. Life doesn't allow you to leave a will sometimes. Life doesn't allow you to leave a letter for your family sometimes. Sometimes life will take you out of here. Just the other day, five went down into the ocean to never return. They're just trying to find pieces and they're not going to get the pieces. They're just trying to find evidence of what life used to be. I can imagine that none of them thought they would never return. Let me tell you, God doesn't always give you an opportunity to write your diary and let people know where you're going and when you're going. It doesn't matter if you have a disease or not. Every day we're sick enough to die. And there's no sense in living in this hot hell and dying and going to hell. You must be. You got to be. You must be born again. Being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, rolling on the floor, shouting, speaking in other, other tongues, these things you may do. What you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. You must individually receive him. No one else can receive him for you. You have to receive him for yourself. And it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized or not. Let me tell you, you got to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Jesus says to us today that you understand that I am God. I am the one who was from beginning to the end. I am the one who kept you. When God hung the stars, I was there. John says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Jesus was with God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. Jesus is God. And verse 14 says it like this. Jesus walked, the word walked among us and did no wrong. But mean men killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. He died that day. They nailed him tight. They stretched him wide. They lifted him high. They dropped him low. He died on Calvary that day. He died until the S-U-N refused to sign. He died until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. He died and there came a storm in the middle of it. There was midday, midnight at midday. It was so dark until one centurion chose us, cried out, surely this must be the Son of God. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb, I tell you. For early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He got up for you. He got up for me. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. As we confess our sin, he makes intercession for us. And what are these old days? At the trump of God. What are these old days? When the trump sounds, what are these old days? At the voice of the archangel, he will get up, he will ride back in here. Jesus called a cloud to get out of here. And one of these days, he's going to crack the sky. He won't come in a Lamborghini. He won't come in a Jaguar. He won't come in a Chevrolet. He won't come like we show up. He will come back on a cloud. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. Are you going with me? You must be. You have to be. You got to be born again. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You must come to Jesus. Have you tried? Will you try? Will you trust him? His name is Jesus, the righteous Son of God. 
If you're going to get to heaven when you die, you need Jesus. Why don't you try him today? You've tried her. She let you down. You tried him. Wasn't all it cracked up to be. You tried them. They walked away. You tried it. Only thing left is to try Jesus. If you never received Jesus as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. If you would just bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe that if you pray this prayer honestly, believe in the story that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried, and he rose from the dead, we believe that you're born again, you're on your way to heaven. And there are others of us who are saved and we know that we're saved, but for some reason or the other, we just keep falling back in sin. I want to pray for us. God, we thank you now. We bless your name for saving our souls. Lord, we have issues. We have problems. We have situations that don't look like you. That don't represent you. We ask you to bless us. We ask you to deliver us. We have attitudes that are not godly attitudes. We ask you to defend our cause. Bless us, Lord, that we will be about your business. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. And we thank you, Lord. Keep us focused. Bless us to remember our purpose. Bless us to respect ourselves. Bless us to honor others. Bless us, Lord, to obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I want to thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Thank God for just blessing us and keeping us. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gift. It is offering time. It's time. It's an opportunity to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand real high and you will be served. If you really need an envelope, please raise your hand real high. During the summer months, if you give to Pastor's Love Offering, it will be given to the church. Therefore, you are having only one offering envelope, and that is a white and blue envelope. So anything you put on that envelope during these summer months will be given to the church. Amen. I want to say thank you to all those, including young people and children, for your love offering down through the years and throughout the year. But I just want to say to you, we want to make sure we flood everything to the church during these summer months. And, and September 1st, you'll be able to give your pastor love often again. Amen. I'll be an amen right there. I mean, <laughs> September 1st, we start back giving the pastor love often September 1st. During these summer months, we want to make sure that uh, everything that we collect goes to the New Beginning Church. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com if you want to mail in your gift you can do so by mailing it to p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 that's p.o box 503 missouri city 
Texas 77459. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give to you. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for money. We ask you to bless us to give, not grudgingly, nor out of necessity. For God, we know you love and cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to say to you, if you have not been giving, start giving. If you have not been tithing, start tithing. If you've been tithing off your net, begin to tithe off, off your growth and watch what God will do. He promised that he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. And as he rebuked the devourer, it doesn't mean that he's going to dump a lot of money. He will pull out the windows or open up the window of heaven and pull out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. But we are blessed with more than money. Some of us are blessed in here today with good health. And we are blessed with wealth. We are blessed with food. And we are blessed with family members that love the Lord. And God has a way of continuing to bless us. Amen. Amen. So if you're on this side, will you stand to bring forth your tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift? Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. And bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. I just want to praise you still drums forever and ever and ever. the Lord's ties off of his
protection in schools, and world peace. Thank you. Let's go to God in prayer for you. He's on our prayer list. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for just being God, for being a healer, for being a keeper. Lord, we ask you to touch every person that's listed and bless those who are present and those who are listening that are not on this list. Lord, we know you, Father God, as the great physician. We know you, Father God, as the company keeper. Bless every bereaved. Bless every person, Father God, under the sound of my voice. Lord, we ask you to give attention to those who are waiting on your blessings. Bless those who are faithful to you. And bless those, Father God, who is growing in your grace. Now, Lord, we look forward to the victory. We look forward to the celebration. We look forward to the testimonies. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, yesterday we had a banquet uh, for scholarships for youth and young people. And many of our parents and grandparents received scholarship. If you received either scholarships or some type of award on yesterday, will you please stand? Uh, the adults who received any kind of award on yesterday, will you please stand? Hallelujah to them. Hallelujah. These awards were because of your contributions. Thank you so much. Your contributions in the community, as well as contributions that you have, have done with the, your children and grandchildren. Your, your grandchildren are amazing. Your children are amazing because of you. And I want to personally say thank you. Thank you for keeping them coming even when they don't want to come. Thank you for imparting in their lives and it will pay great dividends in the very near future. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we, the Weedy Scholarship gave away something like 15 scholarships on, on yesterday. And so we're, we're so grateful. Between uh, Weedy and Turning Hearts, the parents were blessed and the children were blessed. Amen? So thank you so much. I do want to highlight um, a family here. I want the Mayno family to come up real quick, like the Mayno family. Come really quickly, like in a hurry, like sooner than quick. The entire family, when you come, I want to, I want to publicly thank them. Amen. I, I want to preface this by saying all of us in the room have done something for our church. All of us in the room have continually blessed our church and done some great things for our church. Uh, but never in the history of my pastors of 19 years have I encountered a a family that has been diligent in all our projects. Uh, when you go to the fellowship hall to eat, you will see freshly painted walls throughout the whole fellowship hall. These children sacrifice their vacation, their summer vacation, come over with their mom and their dad. The intentions and my request was just paint the back wall, the one that was real ugly, real scratched up, had staples in it. That was my request. But Brother Maynou brought his family over two days. And when I say two days, they clocked in at 7.45. They clocked out at 8, at 5.30, because I walked through there and said, it's time to go home, because I'm leaving. I, I wore my painting clothes, but I didn't have to paint at all. And for two solid days, they worked on the cafeteria, the fellowship hall. So when you go through there, uh, thank them for what they, they have done. Now, if the, children, if the children complain, they must have complained in Spanish. Because I didn't understand the complaint. Amen. But they diligently worked. And they, were, they were very manimal in what they did. And, and I know all of you out here have done something, and I haven't called you up. But this is not about you today. It's, it's about what sacrifices that they have made. And they drive from the north side of town every Sunday and whenever I need some. So when you see the, the, the podium, the lectern, that's sitting over here to my right behind me, uh, Brother Malo put wheels on it at my request. And so when the children are performed, we just roll it out the way. 
And when they get through, we just roll it back in. Uh, the Saturday church, uh, I told the pastor I was tremendously disappointed in him because that, that podium is made for a six foot man and now we added another three inches to it. And he had to, before we added the wheels, he had to go get a step stool to stand behind the pulpit. And so, and so um, they, they have uh, been a tremendous blessing to, to our household and to our church. And I just wanted you to recognize them for that. And we have a couple more projects that Brother Mayhem will have to pull off, amen. And so uh, don't hate, congratulate. Thank you so much. So please say thank you to them. Um, listen, I have pictures of Sister Trejo up on the ladder. I told her, if, if you fall, you ain't getting nothing but hurt. I don't know how that interprets, but if you fall, you get nothing but hurt. So, so that's your choice. To our visitors, if you're visiting with us for the first time, please stand. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, please stand. Tell us who you are and tell us how you get here, got here, or tell us who invited you. Amen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, San Antonio. San Antonio, all the way from San Antonio, Texas. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, since, since you come from San Antonio today, we're going to feed you before you go home. Amen. <laughs> We got a meal just so just fits you just well, amen. So we're gonna feed you for 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 coming all the way from San Antonio. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Noah, for inviting them to come. Thank you, Noah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much to all our visitors. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being being a part of our service. I do have two more services, and one of them is taking place right now. So for those of you who are having birthdays today. Let's sing happy birthday to them while I'm still here. I'm going to rush to this service that's already started, and y'all save me something to eat, all right? <laughs> y'all save me something to eat. I'm going to rush to this other service. I'm going to try to make it back before you get through eating. And then at 3 o'clock, I have another certain service in Third Ward, I mean Third Ward, Houston, Texas. So, uh, and Sister Davis got to go with me on that one. So, uh, whatever you do, uh, pray with me as I maneuver around the city. And I pray for Sister Davis as she continues to follow. Amen. Again, thank you to our young people. Thank you, Sister Davis. Thank you to our choir. Thank you for being a great part of today. Happy birthday, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. If you were born in May and June, please stand right quick for us. If you were born in May and June, amen, amen. Now these are the people who put there if you don't get enough food. They are responsible for feeding us today. So if you don't get enough food, look at them and, and tell them to go to the store right quick. Amen. So these are May and June babies and they are feeding us today. Amen. Why don't we stand? I think that's everything. All minds clear. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. being with us today. Thank you for joining us. If you're visiting with us today, please leave your name and number on the business card. I'd like to call you and see how your day went here at the New Beginning Church. Our mission and vision statement. 
We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Father God. We thank you for who you are, for what you do. Lord, we thank you that you're the great I am. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to bless us as we dismiss ourselves from this place, but never from your presence. We pray that you bless the food, bless the drink, and bless us with safety as we go. Bless us in our travel. Bless those who have to travel back out of town. We ask you to give them favor. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with our members. Bless our church to be a church that will reach out and touch people for Christ. And bless us, Father God, to continue to welcome those who are coming by. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us all sing together. Amen. You are dismissed. We're going this way out of this door. Everybody's going this way uh, to be served. The ladies who left church early, uh, they went back there to prepare for you. Our visitors, our visitors, please line up first. All you who are visiting, whether you're here before or uh, you here for the first time, all our visitors, please get in this line first. Please get in this line. And we're going straight back to the fellowship hall. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.